Hello, ladies and gentlemen. My name is John Cole. I'm the marketing manager at Filmworks, and it's great to see you, so many of you turned up for the second episode of the Filmworks Classroom. Uh, if this is your first time um, to one of our on live, uh, well, online live streams, the Filmworks Classroom is a place where we bring kick-ass teachers like Fabio uh, to show us how to use our tools, as well as some of their top tips when it comes to color grading and restoration. So today, yeah, we are joined by the legendary Gustavo, uh, who is our product manager and our general tech guru, also apparently a keen Lego uh, builder. He'll be answering any questions at the end of the lesson today. And we are, of course, also joined by Fabio Bedoya, who will be running um, the demo today, and you can check out his LinkedIn after this. And he'll be showing us how to set up a project in, D in, for, for, in Phoenix and also how to use DVO Steady and keep your footage in place for further restoration work. If you're new to us, um, Phoenix is our uh, go-to platform for exceptional restoration. Uh, and you can grab yourself a free trial on our website today uh, for 14 days. So you can play around with a bit, test it out and see what it can do for you. And perhaps after this lesson, you can take some of those teachings from Fabio and um, put them into practice. And as a bit of background, Fabio is one of our awesome Incredibles and is a professional restoration and artist and colorist from Peru with his passion focusing on restoring classics from South America and his goal to become a global artist. Fabio is ultimately a master of his craft. So without further ado, I'll stop talking and blabbering on and I'll let Fabio share his screen and show you how to use DVO Steady. Hi. Hi, everyone. So uh, first, we are here on the Phoenix uh, project screen. Uh, right now, if you want to follow with us, we, we're just going to set up a quick and easy project. It's going to be a, a 2K resolution. Uh, and you, if you want to set it uh, like really quick, it's going to be film. In this case, we're going to set up uh, 16 FPS and 24 FPS output. And mostly, we're going to work in 16. And uh, to check, since we are working with Cineon, like in code uh, footage, we're going to set up the uh, our lab here. And, and finally, it's gonna. We are not doing any color management. It's, it's gonna be a straight. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna uh, work with the footage straight out, out of the um, out, out of the uh, out of the box. So it's gonna be a straight video SMTV. So no color management here. So we open the project. Right now, uh, I have something. I have something loaded, but I'm gonna delete everything and I'm gonna bring out our basic composition. So. We load the content, and here I have the steady complete. is gonna have the complete edition of the of the shoot of the shot. So we're gonna let load the steady one. It's got vanilla, no no settings, only the scale. So a quick warning for a previous version. And here we have the the footage. Uh, we are we have four shots here. We are only gonna work on the first one. It's uh, you're gonna see especially what it's what it is about. So this is a. 1920s uh, positive and it's a nitrate film so this was shot uh, no this was scanned with a manual scanner because uh, because it was a nitrate and it was and because it was badly damaged it couldn't like go through a normal scanner so it had to be done manually and because of that uh, the image is quite jumpy and you can see it right now it's one of the worst cases like you refine if you're going to be anything like stabilization related so that that is something that is really good because you are going to see like how how good or how how much can you take the the, the filter how much can you can you improve on this picture and then and uh, a quick setting that you will see right now here is that I'm using I'm using a DBO zoom at, at, at the input effects. Why? Because uh, this footage is supposed to be 4K or 4K-ish, a little more than 4K. So I'm gonna I'm gonna make it fit in our uh, 2K uh, timeline. So it's gonna be uh, it's just only for that. In case you were working with your own footage, you probably will be working on the original uh, size of the of the footage. So no no need for this. It's only for this. Uh, for the purpose of this uh, demonstration so you see right now the image is quite jumpy if i you can see all my hotkeys on the screen uh, if i do control tab i'm gonna take us to a big screen it's uh, it's a full screen with with the playhead and we are here right now the image is quite damaged and let's try the dbo steady 
So here we're gonna see in I'm, I'm using Phoenix like Finnish uh, version. It's gonna have the steady heat in essential plus. So steady two, steady one is, uh, is not for longer use only for for compatibility reasons with other projects. So we're gonna use steady two, and we're gonna use steady two like vanilla out of the box, default settings, anything as it, as it does. So let's go and just let's, let's play. As I'm play, as I'm pressing play, you see right now, um, I have uh, only foreground uh, caching on and, and and saving my cache to to disk. So this helped me like uh, the first time is gonna uh, the first time that it that it that it plays is gonna save everything to a cache. So it's gonna be like it's gonna be rendering like really fast. So right now, especially out of the box, I think uh, for most people it's gonna be like mostly don't yeah okay we have some hiccups here and there let's say here we have like uh, uh quite a big jump and uh, maybe maybe we can maybe you can fix this with a with a pan and scan or maybe doing some some cleanup um but let's try to to improve some of the settings like uh, let's see if we can go a little further so now we go to modes in modes, we have like three modes that work on the whole picture and two modes that need that needs like a, a little more intervention. Yeah, the first one is full. We're going we're going uh, to take the whole picture for the algorithm. We're going to wait, wait all the parts equally. So everything is the same for the algorithm. Center weighted is going to take the center of the image, uh, mostly the content of the frame. So it's going to base the, the um, it's going to place more weight on the on the center of the frame in order to stabilize it. And then border weight is gonna take the, the opposite, it's gonna take the borders and to try to stabilize it with that. And then we have fill frame and fill corners. That's that's something of a more uh, special case scenario, what that happens that I need to set up an ROI in order to use it. But first we're gonna say with border weighted because right now we want not to, to, uh, to focus on the content for, because so, uh, most of the times when you're working in, in uh, stabilization and you're working with restoration, you, you want to preserve the movement of the frame, even if the, even if the frame is moving, because I don't know, the cameraman didn't have, a, uh, didn't have a steady, like a tripod at the time, or because the, the camera was shaking or whatever. So we want to preserve that movement. So we want to, we don't want to mess with that. So most of the time we're going to working with border weighted. And then um, let's see what's this motion. So motion is gonna is gonna is gonna you, you're gonna tell the algorithm how much motion is in the picture. Right now, as it is, if we go to to what I'm doing right now is changing between output and input effects. So we can change between three views like source and output, input effects and output, and base and output. It all depends on how many layers you have here. And you can change between between these three using the key W and E keys. Right now, I'm using only the input effects, so I'm gonna switch between the uh, the input effects. So if I go to the original and I go frame by frame, you can see that no, not two frames. Let's say the house on the back, not two not not two frames have it in the same in the same place. The pixels are not in the same place, so the movement is quite fast. It's like this this is stuttering all over, so it's gonna set fast. So size, we're not gonna mess with this. It's gonna be auto because it's gonna be set according to the resolution of your composition. And density is something more of a shot by shot basis. Depending how, how big is the grain, let's say how many generations there, if it's a negative or if it's a positive. So it really depends. Right now, this is an old picture. It has a lot of dust, it has, it has a heavy grain. So we're gonna use high. And then resolution is, is also how much process processing you want to take. If you want to you wanna take the full frame, like processing it in full, or you want to do it in half. Just this this only helps if you want to like process it. Uh, EDBO study is kind of a heavy process. Stabilization in, in general is kind of a heavy process, especially when you're working in, in bigger than 2K resolutions. So doing that, doing this sometimes when you have like a not so good machine or you are doing in a secondary machine, sometimes helps. But, but right now we're gonna do it in full. We're working in 2K, no issue. And we're doing it in, we can do it either linear or log. Doesn't really matter here, but uh, the footage the footage is um, senior, so we can do we can do log as well. So let's see right, right now how is it doing. Like if we mess a little with with border weight. 
as you see right now, it's, it takes a bit more to start because it's it's computing a, it's computing a bit more. But I'm seeing the results are equally as good. I think a bit more, but we still have that middle hiccup. So what else can we do to, in order to improve that? So I'm thinking uh, maybe we have to limit the frame. So what, one thing that we can do is like, uh, we have here the arrow eye settings. We can either uh, do it here, like manually inputting some numbers here or moving the, the mouse. So we're gonna set up here the the uh, the arrow right behind behind these sprockets and here. Why? Because if you see the the image properly, the the top of the bottom are quite jumpy and they are uh, moving in and out of frame. So if we go if we take the full frame in order for us to stabilize it, it's gonna the the algorithm is gonna believe or it's gonna think that we wanted to preserve those extreme movements that are going in and out of frame at the, at the top of the bottom. So we are going to, by setting up an arrow eye, we're, say, we're saying no, we just want to preserve these things that are in the, in the region of the arrow eye. So, and then we go, let's let's take it even, even a bit more further and we go to processor. In processor, we, gotta, we can set up how much aggressiveness we want in the x, -axis, x, in the x axis and the y axis. Let's say how much we want it to be like how aggressive we want it to be stabilizing. So since this is a locked picture, like uh, this is like a, a, ste a, 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 a steady frame. So there's no, in, in the content, there is no movement. Since this is supposed to be like a steady shot. Like, so we are not gonna affect any of that. So we can be as, as, aggressive, as aggressive as we want. And uh, we, can, we can or cannot respect the motion. It's not gonna make a lot of difference here. We can either do this to 10, and in quality is mostly the smoothness, how much how much we want it to be like stutters or or anything that jitter that sometimes happens. We want it to erase it as, as much as much as we can. So we're gonna set it to 10. And setting all of these is gonna take a bit more time to process. So let's see. So don't forget to set up W. So, so it takes a little more to start. And one thing that we can do that's all that's really good like to check stabilizations is to is to use the grids so we have here a uh, set up some of the grids here in the in in phoenix uh, some of them are usually use let's say for three are used for for safe like titles for save active area or something like that but we have something very interesting for a stabilization that's called the small grid so this is small grid what what it gives you is a lot of like a, a grid that will like give you a an a, a guidance to know where exactly you you can find like a, where exactly a move is a, a, a point is moving in a picture so you can see exactly where where um where a, a pixel is moving and not so at the moment uh, these settings are not probably working correctly Probably because we have gone too much on the on the on the on the motion on the motion on the safety or, or or whatever. But let's say we try to finish the uh, we we go we go back and forward and then we go uh, and we open the the finished shot. Let's see how how many how much difference that we make. So we have the steady complete here here okay so in in this particular shot what i did was to remove all the safe motion safety so it's going to be as as lock as, as i want so let's see the result yeah uh, sometimes it takes a, a bit to to load an image you can always go back to source it happens a, a bit what sometimes so let's check it and let's see uh, how it came out so part of the gate I see we have like decreased all of the movement and let's do a full screen. So you see the sprockets are quite stable. They don't have most, most of uh, if any movement. And 
And the beginning, I, I like to do this extreme like shots because this, like, like I told you, I, I, this like takes the the filter to the extreme. So you wanna like see how much can it be done, how how, how good of a repair you can you make. And of course, let's say at, at here at the beginning you have like a bit of uh, uh, I think this is splice or maybe, but it's it's a movement that, that can be smooth that it's smoothed out. Maybe you can do it some 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 manual keyframing in order to fix that. But let's let's do a comparison. Uh, remember, in order to take out the grids, you can press F8. F8 is our uh, hotkey to remove the, the grids. And let's do a comparison between the between the two modes. So right now, in the left is the finished shot, and the right is the is the input effects. So you see the difference is basically, basically night and day. The image has become quite steady. And something that's really interesting is that if you watch the picture on the left, we have preserved some of the movement that was in the content. So that's our main goal in, stabi in stabilization and, and probably in, in restoration, that the content must be respected, even if the move, even if it was moving. So uh, uh, it's, this is not as, uh, this is not the same as in editing. This is not the same as in, in normal like video uh, visual effects. We don't want to like take this house and make it steady because this not it's, that would be like a modern standard. We want to like make the stabilization in the corners using the sprockets and things like that. So that's pretty much what, what we do, what we do here in the in Phoenix and using these tools. So now I'm ready for questions. Well, there we go. Thank you so much, Fabio, for showing that. I mean, the night, the difference between the two is absolutely night and day, um, which is amazing considering myself, I have no idea how any of this works. It's like watching a wizard, uh, which is brilliant. And again, thank you so much, Fabio. So now is the time for questions. I mean, we have had uh, Louis make a very, very valuable point. Lego Batman does indeed slap. It's uh, a fantastic uh, film. But if anyone has any questions, it'd be great to, well, Gus and Fabio are here to answer. Um, Delfina. Uh I, I actually have one question for Delfina if she was able to get the viewer working because she sent me an email last night for the support page. I was like, have oh. you made it work or not? Because she wanted to, uh, to try the demo, but she couldn't get the viewer to function. So Delfina oh, well. didn't work in the end. As this is a reverse question here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm curious because she was having issues last night. So. Oh, no. Well, I think... Um... Well, yeah, definitely, I think it is a powerful tool. I mean, I'm someone who is completely oblivious to some sometimes on some of the work that Gus and Fabio does, and seeing it's amazing. Did it did it manage to work, Delfina? We shall hear back. Oh, yeah, well, shit. oh no! Okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> now let, let me know. Reply to my email. We'll help you out. Okay. Just let me know. You do have a video card that we haven't tested, which is the the Intel card, but we will help you out. We'll figure out something. Real. Does anyone else have any other questions for Fabio or Gus? Give it a couple of seconds. I mean, I I've got one um, from me if, uh, if uh, Fabio to answer. Is DVO Steady always the first thing you kind of do in a restoration project, or is there any other tools you use with it or beforehand? Uh, yeah, most of the time, I would say like 95% of the time is going to be a stabilization because without a steady image, you couldn't do like anything. Let's say you want to like do a manual cleanup. Mm -hmm. then, let's say we go here and we go the, the DBO fix and we do some manual cleanup here. Yeah, we, let's disable the stabilization. So, Ooh, so I'm doing a manual cleanup and uh, trying no, so not, not this, not going to be see, disabled here. And disabling here. So, uh, by doing this manual cleanup, what I'm, what I'm telling the, the picture is that to search like uh, between the the previous and the and the next frame, uh, how can I clean this frame? So, if I do this, let's say I, I took an extreme example. Let's say this is this was an artifact. If I clean it here, it's gonna erase it because in the next one, it's not there because. The, the image is so jumpy that it doesn't know where to start. So we cannot do anything, especially like even manual, automatic, any any job cannot be done without an steady image. And, and I'm not talking about the content. I'm talking about like 
especially the sprockets. Maybe the content is moving because uh, that's the way it was uh, it was shot. That, uh, that's okay. That's something that the curator must decide if you wanna mm -hmm. stabilize or not. But it makes our job easier and it makes the tools work at all because if you don't stabilize it, if you like say use a DBO dry clean or DBO gas, it's gonna give you a lot of false positives. So that's not, that's not something that we want. We don't wanna create like more artifacts when we are restoring. We wanna like improve their job. We wanna make it faster. Mm. So it is genuinely like the first stop port of action yeah. is to yeah. make it yeah. steady and hold it still sort of thing. Uh -huh. Unless you have like uh, interlaced footage or you gonna you gotta up upscale something that that should be first. In these cases, we are we are doing that. We are upscaling. We are making it. We are downscaling right now. We are making it fit. So that should be first in case you have this. Like you're going, you're doing those operations, or you're doing an inter, uh, the interlacing, or removing, or removing the tree to pull down of a telecine or something like that. But most of the time, if you're taking a, a scan, let's say for a, for a from a, a DPX or a or a scene or an or an EXR or whatever, you're gonna do a stabilization first. Hmm. Oh, brilliant. Well, Delphine has come back with a follow-up question on that one. Is the stabilization better to do in parts by camera shots? Or, or under what criteria? No, it's gonna it's gonna be a shot by shot basis. Yeah, uh, especially because uh, most of the, uh, when 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 film was edited, it was edited like a shot by shot basis because it was like literally cut and um, glued together from different reels or whatever. So uh, sometimes the, uh, when they did that, the, the the printer or the or the copier they, they did did a great job like making the the real homogeneous sometimes it will work like doing the same stabilization for for everything but most of the time you want to do it shot by shot especially uh, if you are doing like dbo steady um, and center weighted because it's going to take the content in consideration so if the content changes abruptly it's going to mess all, all the all everything so it's going to make your your image jump from one place to another because it's not going to know wow why is it changing from from this uh, nice train why is it changing to to this like uh, to this don to this white and blind donkey? So it's not gonna know what what's going what what's happening. So it's gonna it's gonna be it's gonna be a shot by shot basis. Real. Well, thank you. I hope that answers your question, Delfina. But um, can't see any other questions. So with all of that in mind, I'd like to say thank you everyone for jumping on and uh, listening to the second episode of the Filmworks Classroom. This will be available on our YouTube channel later on next week. So in case you missed it or you want to have a review again and see what Fabio says, you can just hop on there and check out the video. If you've never used Phoenix before, you can grab a free trial, obviously on our website uh, at filmworks.com and try it out for yourself. And perhaps we might even be setting up a page soon for some homework where you can play around with the footage yourself to solve become a pro like Fabio. Uh, but again, thank you so much. Again, thank you, Gus, for joining. And thank you so much, Fabio. And from me, have a lovely rest of your evening, everyone, or your afternoon.